Good morning and welcome to Wayne's Lock Shop. Today on waynesLockshop.com we are going to be installing an Alarm Lock DL2800 series with a small format interchangeable core. Here the first thing you'll need to do is determine whether or not you need to rehand the lock. It's going to come handed one direction when it comes out of the package. This is how you rehand it if it needs to go the other direction. You put the keypad on the secure side and if the handle or the lever is pointed the wrong way, meaning that it's pointed towards the frame, you will need to rehand the lock. You start off by put depressing the detent, turning the key or turning the internal portion of the interchangeable core, remove the lever, and switch the whole chassis 180 degrees. Now we're beginning to install the lock on the door. A lot of people don't like the, the fact that we use impact drivers, however, I have used this enough to where I do not break the screws, and if I do, I do know how to fix that. So for the most part, I highly recommend you start off by hand, and then learn and get the feel. After a while, a nice little 12 volt impact driver will really save your wrists and keep you from, I personally feel it may keep you from getting some kind of carpal tunnel or something like that uh, in older age. So that's my reasoning behind it. However, here we have put the instructions on the door. We've put the mounting device on the door. This is the mounting te template. I prefer to cut the hole for the center on a door that's already been prepped for a singular uh, commercial style lever, I like to cut the center out and base the rest of the installation off of that. You then fold the edges, push the installation chart on there and mark out your holes. You need to determine whether you have a fire door or not and that will determine where your center hole is drilled. After you have the center and the top two holes drilled, then it's time to start installing the lock. Make sure that the wires come through unmolested or cut. Do not cut the wires. This is really extremely important in a metal door. Metal doors are notorious for cutting wires and will cause problems later on down the road. Make sure that every com everything comes through nice and smooth and clean. No tears or cuts. If you see bare wires, you need to start over and address that before you move forward. We have attached the plate that attaches to the chassis. It has a portion that says top and bottom. There will be pan head screws that go along with that. And then next we have installed the mounting plate above that, the secondary square plate that is above it that is mounted to the door. I highly recommend that you do not tighten these two screws. You will need some wiggle room later when you need to install the other screws. That plastic washer is a spacer. If you need to install on a thinner style door, that's what those are for. Here, we're installing the rest of the internal lock on the internal portion of it. You can see the Loctite on the very long fluted style screws that will lay flat they're tapered on the end, so they will lay flat on the edge. Here I'm showing that you can adjust the torque put out by your impact driver so you can set it on a very low setting so you don't over tighten or strip the screws. Once again, my personal belief, I use the impact driver to do the work. The tools do the work for me. I, that's the whole point of buying them. If you're careful with them, they can be used, but it, there is a learning curve. Now there will be two screws mounted on the upper portion. This is why you leave that internal plate a little bit loose so you can get these to line up and hang on there. This is a very important process. You will be backing the screws off if you do not follow that process in most cases. Now that the internal portion is perfectly mounted on and all of the screws are tightened, you can now suck everything down and begin to plug in the electronics. You use the supplied jelly or petroleum jelly, I think it is, or whatever lubricant it is, that's designed to keep moisture out of the electronic components. All of the circuit board is consumed in potting material or a jelly-like substance. The, this particular uh, lubrication goes on every electronic connection to keep moisture out. Once you have the battery pack connected, there is a folder that says that you need to push the AL button and hold it down to clear it from factory settings. Now, putting the last 
piece of the last screw in is a very important decision. You can use the supplied Phillips head or you can use the anti-tamper screw. In most cases, I use the Phillips head simply because it's easier. Sometimes if there's a secure situation or there's a, if it's a public bathroom or something where you're gonna have a lot of public vandalism, things like that, then you would use the anti-taper screw. You'll also notice that I put my phone number on the lock. You would be surprised at how many calls I get back to come service these locks. Everything from changing batteries to changing codes. Very, very important. They're available at Professional Business Products and PBP2000.com. I get a tremendous amount of work simply by adding these stickers to these electronic locks. And when people have a problem with them, I get the phone call to make keys for them as businesses change hands, keys get lost, codes get lost, and batteries die. So even though you put electronic locks in, it does not mean that you lose any business. In fact, I find that I get more business. Here I'm pushing the AL button to clear the lock, and then I'm testing the code and making sure that everything retracts. You can see that the latch retracts very smoothly. You can hear the latch engage, you can hear the lock engage, you can hear the solenoid engage or the motor drive, and you can feel a response. Multiple checks, multiple times to make sure that the installation is flawless. If you have problems here, you're gonna have more problems in the future. Now I'm demonstrating a stripped screw GKL Products makes an oversized screw with the same size head that will seat down in there and take that slack out of that hole. You could also stuff some chopsticks or pieces of wood, doweling, golf tees, toothpicks, anything you have in there to help tighten that up. But if you're here, you might as well go ahead and fix the problem. Don't ever leave stripped or nasty screws after you've been there you're a professional installer you need to be fixing all of the problems here we're demonstrating the again more problems with this door this is the hinge doctor and my new favorite way how to use this nobody has done this from what i have seen so far so i'm demonstrating it for you i'm using airbags on the latch side of the door or the side of the door opposite from the hinges and I'm making that door, I'm pinning that door as far towards the hinge side as possible. I have three airbags wedging it into place. I have the door shut and I'm using the crescent wrench to use the hinge doctor to suck that slack back up. I find that the, that the airbags help keep the hinge more flat and keep pressure against it while you're bending it so that you're re-swedging the hinge as flat as it can be instead of bending it at an angle to where the hinge can still be at a V angle. From what I can tell, this is the safest, easiest, and most effective way to use this tool. Try it and find out. You can always use the hinge doctor regularly. However, I find that this way is much more successful and it keeps the door I've used the hinge doctor and then had the door not shut properly because the hinge actually feed instead of re-swedging. So you can see all of the gap. You can see the gap has been taken up and closed. You can see that the hinge was adjusted and is flat, not so much V'd, and it successfully fixed this door extremely well. Here we are with just still photos and a slideshow, starting off with that round plate that goes first. With the two pan head screws, the important read this packet in there go walks you through the steps of resetting the lock in case there were factory codes. What happens is, is they will pull factory codes and do factory testing on these locks, and there could possibly be a lock that you get that had factory testing in it. So that's why you need to clear the lockout. Here are the oversized screws that we use to fix that strip screw from GKL Products. Very, very nice. Again, another sticker goes on to the instructions that I give the owner or the customer of the lock. The reason I do this is again, it gets me a tremendous amount of callbacks because people just become frustrated at programming and changing batteries and they need some help. Very good tips, stay safe, 